So what is going on people, welcome to episode 8 of the FM23 save here on, uh, well I can't say the beta anymore, actually can I? I'm recording this the day it comes out and uh, the full fat version of the game is finally upon us, I hope you're enjoying full release. Uh, well we need to get the save done and we will be doing it, I would hope, this week if I can actually get my arse and gear and record but we are in the middle of April so we are very much near the end of the season now if you are looking forward to this episode make sure you pop a like on there for me subscribe to the channel as ever and well today Champions League quarter finals and you may have been already been able to see we have an advantage and let's not hang around let's have a look at the fixture since we were last together so in that last episode we played Spurs and then turned around our deficit to Benfica with a 4-0 win and well, we follow that up with a 4-1 win against Aston Villa in the Premier League Edouard at the double Alvarez and Foden with the goals a much different performance than when we played Villa last time when we lost first game after the World Cup we then lost 2-0 to Brighton in the FA Cup quarterfinal really disappointing again did play a rotated side Morgan Rogers played again couldn't recreate his performance for against Spurs and the Lamptey goal was absolutely comical. It's uh, I think Edison's gone to clear it. It's hit I think Stones maybe like plush in the face, and it's just fallen straight to Lamptey, who's like, "Thanks very much." As you can see, they gave it a fair good go as well. They had slightly edge possession, almost as many chances as us. But yeah, if we have a look at this, so. Okay, <laughs> hit Stones square in the face. Lamptey, thank you very much. Left back's not paying attention. I don't know whether Stones has fallen over and it's just hit him or he's tried to dive in, head it to divert it further away. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, so that was a defeat. So we're no, no uh, domestic cups this season. It's well, Domestic cup competitions, any domestic silverware we win will be the Premier League. And we look on good course to do so. I thought this was going to be the start of a mini blip. We then travelled to Palace and drew two all. Edward scoring against his former club. Jean-Philippe Mateta at the double though for Crystal Palace denying us all three points. We then got our revenge against Brighton with a 2-1 win. Cole Palmer grabbing a goal. Edward with a winner 10 minutes from time. We did go 1-0 down in this game as well. And then a Cole Palmer hat-trick at home against Leeds. Absolutely super. He was unbelievable. As you can see, 10 rating in this game. Absolutely unbelievable. Did concede a late consolation, which is a little disappointing. But yeah, Cole Palmer just turned up in this game. He was absolutely superb. And then in our most recent game, Juventus away. The first leg of this Champions League quarter-final. We said, of course, we would find out who we would be playing in this episode. And what was Juventus and uh, to be honest, if we have a look at the teams left in the draw, Juventus, in terms of maybe not, well, maybe on paper actually, they're not doing particularly well, but they're sixth in Serie A this season. On paper, this was probably the easiest tie we could have got um, into, well, if we just go back to Serie A, Milan second into fourth. Um, PSG atop of the Liga, and as you'd imagine, Bayern atop of the Bundesliga, Liverpool second currently in the Pro, no third in the Premier League, and Barcelona second in La Liga. Yeah, Bayern top of the Bundesliga. So yeah, on paper, Juventus was kind of the easiest draw we could get, which was kind of why I was comfortable playing the first leg offline, and then uh, bringing you the second leg, and we did. Pick up a 2-0 win. Bernardo Silva opened the scoring. It was an unbelievable first goal. Really good from Bernardo Silva. And then late doors Haaland just giving us that little bit of a cushion. Um, and yeah, we bring a 2-0 lead to the home leg. So really pleased about that. If we go back to the fixtures as we saw them. There we go. So into PSG 0-0 after the first leg. Buying a 4-0 win over Barca in the first leg. Liverpool and Milan won a piece. If we get to the semi-final, we play either Inter or PSG. So, if it's Inter, I'm confident PSG less so, but we'll have to wait and see when we get there. But we take on Chelsea in the first game in today's episode, if we go back to an earlier game this season, where we did play them also again in the live con. We beat them 4-0. That was at home, so I'm not expecting things to be 
as easy, although they are in 8th position, then Pep Guardiola is their manager. I think John Terry was their caretaker manager when we last played them. Um, so yeah, if we have a look at the Premier League table, this is how it looks then. We currently sit 9 points ahead of Arsenal. Liverpool, if they win their game in hand, will make it an 8 point deficit. But you'd think, surely now, we would go on and win um, the league. Although we do have Liverpool and United to play in our final few games of the season. So I'm not counting my chickens just yet, but things are looking good. If you look at the stats as well, we are dominating the stats. Haaland and Edouard top of the tree in terms of goals. Haaland having the most shots. Edwards up there as well. Alvarez, most assists. De Bruyne and Foden with 10 apiece. Silva and Rodri both have eight. You know, we are absolutely average rating as well. We're dominating that four of the top five. Um, yeah, it's just it's just insane. Um, De Bruyne is still out injured. Not too far away now, about 10 days away. But yeah, really going to be glad to have him back in the side. If we just highlight a couple of players as well again. We look at Haaland. He's got 36 in 36 in all competitions now. 26 in 24 in the league. 7 and 7 in the Champions League. Absolutely loving it. One player I did want to mention though is Julian Alvarez. He starts the game, or at least started on the beta. I don't know how much updates have been made since the full fat game has been released. Alvarez started as a two and a half star player and he's now four stars. The growth this guy has shown is absolutely superb. You can see his attributes are just getting higher and higher. Only 23 years old. He is wanted by Bayern Munich and PSG. Um, luckily, we won't have to deal with that. But look at some of his stats already. Like as a striker, 14 finishing, not bad, could be better. Very good first touch, good work rate. Off the ball is very good. Flair is very nice. Decision making is good. Composure maybe slightly better, but that's only to be like an elite level player. Do you know what I mean? He's a he's a very good Premier League player as it stands. He's only 23. Some of these improve just so slightly. He would be an elite player in absolutely no time. He's got 13 goals this season. So, you know, really good contribution from him. He's really starting to overtake Edouard, um, who, again, has been a really solid player for us. He scored 20 goals this season in the Prem, 16 in 20 for us in the league. So, Edouard has been more than the sum of his parts. And, um, yeah, really, really impressed with how these boys have all contributed. And, uh, well... That brings us to the team for today's game. So without any further ado, let's get into that. So this team, you probably... Well, there's been a couple of changes, actually, from uh, from normal. So Edison in goal, Cancelo at right back, Walker still battling with fitness. Um, I think he came back to fitness against Juventus, and I played him, and he picked up another knock. So just going to take it easy with him for now. He might feature in the second leg. Stones and Akanji at the back. Those two have played together a bit recently, formed a decent partnership. Diaz has been out suspended. Laporte's form hasn't been particularly good. I'm going to go on his form now. He's going to play really well. Um, but yeah, he's, he's been coming on as a sub. But yeah, 6.7, 6.5, 6.4. So there are good games in there. But if you go back earlier as well, he's had he's getting out of his funk essentially. But there has been a bit of a funk around Laporte. And Stones and Akanji have been playing really well together. So I figured I wouldn't mess it up. I think they they played in the game against Juventus as well. Uh, Guy at left back. Rodri and Bernardo Silva in the midfield. Foden out on the right. Grealish out on the left. And then Alvarez and Haaland up top. Grealish is, uh, well, a couple, was it a couple of episodes ago when we said, oh, he's been really, like, he come out of his... Um, he started playing well again. Um, we dug him out and he scored and he was playing well. And then ever since then, he's just gone back to being his usual uh, not-so-good self. But plenty of options on the bench, as we said. De Bruyne coming back to fitness. Diaz is suspended. So a pretty good team. One that I am more than happy with uh, playing against this, well, let's call it what it is, struggling Chelsea side. I don't know how long... Guardiola has been in the job 13th of November okay so then so that's Guardiola's record so far they haven't won in seven games what's the odds that they go and beat us today after not winning for seven games they beat Arsenal not too long ago as well 
Right, anyway, let's continue on into the game. But guys, let me know in the uh, in the comments below, by all means, who are you doing as your uh, as your first save on the full fat FM? I can't see any new signings in the team, but we will press on. Yeah, let me know who you're doing as uh, who you're doing as your first save, and is is there any particular reason why you're doing that save? Have you got an irrational love for a team that's based in I don't know Andorra? Is, you know, are you doing a, a non league to legend style thing this year? Are you doing a you know well I guess non league to legend taking someone from the bottom to the top? You know, what's what's your save this year? Let me know down in the comments. I started a reading save on the full fat version of the game last night, but didn't quite I managed to do pre season. I always do quite an extensive pre season. You might have been able to tell from this save alone. We played plenty of friendlies. It's uh Kovacic is in the area and gone in I don't really know what's happened there but 15 minutes in and Chelsea have taken the lead Kovacic seemed to be going nowhere it's really poor defending from our point of view he's allowed to get into the area and he's just given the time and space Roger goes for the tackle but it evades it hits Edison in the replay it did look like it hit Edison in the face which isn't ideal but uh, early doors at Stamford Bridge we find ourselves 1-0 down and uh, Guardiola must be stood on the sideline, grinning like a Cheshire cat. But they already look better and already look more organised than when we played them earlier in the season. Although they were a team in turmoil at this point. But we said, didn't we? Although Foden has robbed his man of the ball. Grealish is in the area. Jack Grealish, it's a good save. Alvarez is there and he gets the rebound. And I think it's going to count his 14th goal of the season. And well, we weren't behind for long, were we? Grealish, I thought Grealish was going to score when he was in behind, but Pulisic caught Dalling on the ball. It's a lovely ball from Foden to find the gap. Grealish tries across the keeper. It's a good save from Mendy. He does the right thing as well and parries it away from goal. But Alvarez, too quick to the rebound and is able to hook it back in. And well, we find ourselves level, which is really, really pleasing. As I said, didn't want to be too behind for too long. We come forward again, Grealish. Down this left-hand side. Got a couple of men for company. Kovacic, though, cuts it out. Oh, I thought Haaland was going to rob Koulibaly of the ball there. And Pulisic is bombing down this left-hand side. He's getting away from Cancelo as the American. He's into the area. And we need someone to come across. Stones. Let's talk, buddy. What was... He looked like he won the ball. But then Pulisic was just able to shoot like normal. It's a really... I mean, he's absolutely rinsed Cancelo for pace here. And it took Stones a while to come across. But he's like, just... That's a really weird goal. A re like, he's challenged him. But it hasn't put him off his stride whatsoever when it comes to striking the ball. I really don't know what to say about that. And well, this doesn't stand us in good stead if we can't put in a performance today. It doesn't stand us in good stead for the second leg. It is 2-1 at half time. I'm going to pump the fist. Come on, boys. Let's give everyone... You know, the media have been praising us recently. That's good. Who would ever say that? Like, in a dressing room, you'd think surely the last thing that they would talk about is the media and stuff like that. But, hey-ho, Gaia is on a 5.9 rating. That is not ideal. Bernardo, crossfield ball to Foden. He's going to keep this one in. Phil tries to play it down the line, but it's a loose pass. Thiago Silva to Pulisic, the goal scorer. Long crossfield ball from Thiago Silva has found Sterling an absolute treat. He's down the line here. Raheem Sterling skips past Gaia. Oh, tries to find Havertz. No way is that a penalty. He's coming and won the ball, referee. Right, let's have a look at this. That is absolutely ludicrous. He's, unless he's come through the man, which I don't think he did. Let's just rewind this. So the ball comes in then. And has he come through the man? Yeah, no, he has. All right, fair enough. I won't argue with that then. He's come through. He's won the ball, Rodri, but he has come through the man. I've noticed they've added the little midpoint mark. Anyway, it's not important. We could be a 3-1 down here on the hour. It's Thiago Silva stepping up the centre-half. And Edison makes the save. His compatriot denies him. Maybe he knew what way he was going to go. But either way, Edison has kept us in this game. Pulisic with the corner though, danger not away, Rodri 
heads away. Only back out to Pulisic though. He cut inside the area. He's offside. Right, we're going to make a change. Guy is coming off after having his shocker. Right, no real natural left back for us, unfortunately. So uh, Laporte's had to come on and play left back. Laporte ball in. It finds Rodri though. Oh, his headed effort not too far wide. Mendy was scrambling across the goal. And Pulisic, the goal scorer, has gone off actually. Chilwell ball down the line. It's found Havertz, you know. Oh, and it's a good block in the end. I thought the keeper would just come out and claim that, but he was a little hesitant to come off of his line. And well, Gallagher is going to whip this corner in. Aims for the far post this time. Havertz gets his head to it, but Edison able to collect. Right, changes have been made as uh, Kante brings the ball back into play nicely. Edward is on for Grealish. We moved Alvarez to the left-hand side. And well, we could be in it. On to Edward, the substitute. Oh, it's a great save. He's drilled it straight at Mendy. You feel either side of him and it's going to be a goal, but I don't know how much Mendy knew about it, but he got it up and over the bar. Havertz heads away in the near post corner. Yeah, Ake has come on as well. Akanji wasn't having a particularly good game. Into the final 10 minutes. Something's got to give, surely. Right, almost into the final five minutes. We are going gung-ho, but it could leave us susceptible. The back Gallagher with a corner in. Please don't concede. Gundogan's come on for Bernardo as well, and we've pushed him into the attacking mid-roll. Rodri heads away, Havertz, and as far as Gallagher, oh, and he's hit the bar. I thought it was going to go wide, but it seemed to bend in at the last second. It's hit the bar. Come on, boys. Can there be one last chance? Rodri is absolutely shagged. That's going to be that, I think. Defeat to Chelsea and our former boss. Pep Guardiola, and you look at the stats, they've absolutely deserved that. Another defeat this season. A little bit disappointing, I won't lie. And as I said, doesn't stand us in particularly good stead for the Juventus game. We need a reaction against Juventus. And well, Liverpool now two games in hand. If they win both, they could come six points clear, and we still need to play them. That's what I mean, nine points clear, but... Things can change very quickly. And well, lots of scouting. Blimey. Um, right, yeah. A turnaround is needed. If we if we only need a draw and we're in the Champions League semi final. Right, we are back then for the second leg against Juventus and a change of shape and uh, some a change of personnel really. We've got a few players not quite fit enough to play this game. Don't really want to risk them. Considering we do have an advantage and I feel like the side we have out there is strong enough. Um, maybe eating my words later on, but this is how we line up for the second leg against Juventus. So, this 4-2-3-1 system we are deploying. Edison is going to be in goal. Walker at right back comes in. Diaz and Ake at centre-backs with Cancelo moving over to left-back. Gundogan and Bernardo Silva are going to be in the centre of midfield. Gundogan, that ball win and roll. Silva, we've made a Mazzala for this game, just a role that he prefers. And again, it gives us a bit of an option going forward as well. Cole Palmer's come in. He's going to be on the right-hand side. Alvarez is going to play in the number 10 role as an advanced playmaker. Edouard out on the left. And Haaland is going to be up top for this one. Again, options on the bench. Laporte, Gaia, Kanji. Uh, defensive options, lots of youngsters on the bench there, Grealish is there, Phillips is there if we need him as well hopefully we won't have to call too much on these guys, but as we said without any further ado then let's get into this one and hopefully, you know it's a hope for, well, for the video it won't be that good, for this game and my nerves, I'm kind of hoping this game is a bit of a non-event, I think a fairly similar side to the one that uh, they played last time out. Let's pump the fist. Come on, boys. This is a match that we should be winning. The Champions League music play. And then there is the graphic. Still really enjoying these cutscenes, it must be said. But we've watched this a fair bit now. So let's just get into the game then. Well, 4-3-3 for Juventus. First highlight a couple of minutes in. Long ball forward from Chesney. Aki is there to win. McKenney does really well. But only as far as Aki. Gundogan. Long ball forward looking for Cole Palmer. And he actually robs Quadrado of the ball. You could anticipate that. Into the area. Finds Haaland. It's a goal. It is going to be offside though. I think that one was fairly clear. 
But it's getting to the point now. I feel like with the match engine, I haven't played this as much, nearly as much as probably a lot of people have. But obviously the unpredictabilities that first came with this year's match engine, I feel like now I'm starting, it's starting to, be, the unpredictabilities are starting to become predictable. Do you know what I mean? Like the differences in the match engine this year, you were sort of like, oh, some of it's sort of come out of nowhere, but now you can kind of telegraph when it's going to happen. Um, yeah, I was discussing this with someone yesterday, um, colleague uh, that I work with that is just as obsessed with FM as I am. Um, but yeah, it's a really good to see Edward battling well on that left hand side. Though. And Cole Palmer scored. The youngster makes his mark on the Champions League. And well, it's really good that is that's one I think one aspect of any save that everyone loves is uh, seeing the youngsters come through and doing really well. And uh, obviously City, they're not sort of known really for bringing plenty of players through their academy. I guess the only recent success you would say really is Phil Foden. But if we could do this, you know, Cole Palmer, he's already, like we said, already made quite the stamp on this season. He's got that hat-trick against Leeds. I think Haaland's offside here. And then it's poor keeping from Chesney. Palmer's grabbed his second, but it's not going to count. Haaland again offside. And that, well, if things had gone our way, inside 20 minutes, we could have been 3-0 up here. But proving we are absolutely rampant tonight. We're really in the mood to make up for that game against Chelsea. And, well, Alvarez with the corner. And it's going to be a penalty. I was wondering what was going on there. But, um, yeah, it's, it's I'm not too sure what happened. But I was waiting for the ball to head goalwards. In the end, Harlot right... You lot can see now. He's. I guarantee he'll score because it's a game. But he's missed like every penalty. And he, yeah, ah, just slam my desk. He's missed every penalty that he has taken this season. As soon as it's in a live com, he buries it. It's typical, really. Thirty fifth goal of the season though for Haaland. And well, Chesney's not saving that. That is a perfect penalty from Haaland. Top bins makes you wonder if he could have done that. Every time he's taken a penalty, he'd probably be in forty, the 40s now for goals this season. Di Maria whips the corner in. It's towards the near post. Quadrado will pick up on the loose ball. Di Maria into the area. Back to Quadrado. Into the area. Towards the byline. And he's managed to squeeze that in. That's really poor from our point of view. No one's got out to him. And Edison, again, just static on his line. I know this did one update they did bring. They said that they've made goalkeepers a bit... A little less eccentric, but if you've just made them absolutely pointless, then that might arguably be even worse than the eccentricity. But as it stands, 2-1 on the night, just under 10 minutes to go to our time. It's 4-1 on aggregate, so we're still in a good place. Juventus needing to score three in this game just to take it to extra time as it stands. And hopefully we won't collapse that much with the goal scoring potential we have in this team. Haaland's in. Haaland scores an absolute thunderous effort on the. I think, was that even on the volley? I thought it was a half volley, but it might have actually just sort of hit his thigh and then struck it. We won't see it from this angle. Still loving the 2D. <laughs> no one's going to. Despite playing this in 3D, this, this series, the main game, no one's going to convert me. I'm still a 2D man. Been playing it in my offline save. But yeah, Haaland. At the double, and well, he could have had th he could have had three. We could have had five. It's three one at half time, five one an aggregate. I think it's fair to say we will be in the cha the Champions League semi final. A very good performance, and well, things may well carry on at this rate. Diaz bringing the ball a long way. Gundogan long ball forward, and Palmer has got the space in behind Quadrado, t twisting and turning. Cuts back, ball in, Haaland is there. Oh, and it's headed wide. Every time this man has an effort, you expect it to hit the back of the net. It didn't on this occasion, but it wasn't too far away either. Locatelli, ball over the top for Danilo. And that's a very, very good ball in, it should be said, but no one there in the area for Juventus, unfortunately. As Edison bowls out now, Walker up to Palmer. Gundogan is there. Walker making that burst forward. It's a lovely triangle to find Carl Walker. Haaland has got space in the middle. Haaland is there. 
And while Chesney has tipped that onto the post, it wasn't the best effort from Ireland. Don't know whether he scuffed it on his right foot. But it is, uh, yeah, Chesney made it look a little bit harder than it needed to be. We are going to make a change. Cancelo is struggling out on the left-hand side. And that's an easy sub to make. We can just bring Geyer on, on that left-hand side. Chesney with the ball forward. Ruben Diaz heads down well. But we've lost out in the midfield. Rabio out to Kostic. Ball over the top. Vlahovic is in. He chests it down. It's a lovely finish. I don't think it's offside. VAR is going to have a look at it. The players surround the referee. The Juventus players running back. They think they've grabbed the goal. And it has been awarded. It was a good goal from uh, uh, Vlahovic. A good ball over the top as well from Kostic. Oh, it's tight. I think it's Geyer, actually, of all people, that's actually playing him on. But it's a very good finish, and Juventus have a goal back. Going to make a slight adjustment to the... Ta also going to tell the boys actually to fire up, but made a slight adjustment to the tactic. Just drop the defensive lines a little bit. I didn't realise we normally play with sort of standard pressing lines. In this formation, it's actually still set to high. Um, so just drop those back for the final sort of 20 minutes. Palmer. Oh, it's a lovely finish from Cole Palmer. He grabs a second. It's a lovely finish into the corner. Chesney couldn't quite get there. And again, we replied to a Juventus goal almost immediately. Edouard has played really well on this left-hand side, actually. Alvarez goes for the head and couldn't quite get there. But Palmer, the composure, just to twist and turn and find his man. Chesney was already on the floor as the ball was going past him. But it's placed to perfection. It is 4-2. And yeah, well, PSG, as you can see there, just gone 3-0 up against Inter. So I think it's fair to say we will be playing PSG in the semi-final of the Champions League. One more change for us. Alvarez has gone off and we've pushed Silva into the attacking midfield role. And Calvin Phillips has come on as the ball winner. Di Maria, late corner in. It's Vlahovic is there. And I think Edouard is the one that's got on the end of that. And great like determination from Walker to get there. Even when the game is won, deep into added time, he's still full sprinting at that, making sure it's not going out for another corner. And well, are we about to maybe score another? Palmer tries to feed in Haaland and Bremer. Just gets there ahead of the Norwegian. Chesney, long ball forward, looking for Paredes. Headed down, though. Edouard, ball over the top. Haaland, he could be in again. Ed. I was going to say Edouard Haaland then. It's Edouard to Haaland. It's a goal for Man City. It's like that World Cup song that Ant and Deck did. Edouard to Haaland. Haaland to goal. 5-1. Or oh, 5-2. Not actually too far to be fair. But lovely. Again, I've, Edouard's really played well on this left-hand side actually. But again, like I said, every time that man has a shot Haaland, you expect it to go in. That is his hat-trick I think for today. It is indeed Edouard with three assists as well. Lovely, lovely job. Pogba ball in. Diaz is there to head away. And well, what a response as well to the uh, the Chelsea result as well. Rabio. I mean, that wasn't far away. And uh, <laughs> Edison was just not bothered whatsoever. But there's the final whistle. I'm giving it large on the touchline. Right across. Literally feet from Massimiliano Allegri. I, I assume it's still him. Um, who's got his head... In his hands. Yeah, very happy with how the tie went. Absolutely. Is it Allegri? Who's still in charge? Where is he? No, Urs Fischer, who was the Union Berlin manager, is now... That's really interesting. That's a proper, like, sideways... Well, not sideways, but just unexpected move. So, Allegri was sacked in January... And Fisher was brought in almost immediately. They didn't hang around. Well, he's only been there 81 days. But yeah, crikey. Right, well, as you can see, we are through. 7-2 on aggregate finishes PSG. And that front three. Oh, God, I thought that was a first-team player then. Well, thank God for that. Right, so as you can see, PSG. And we are away from home in the first leg as well again, which could be crucial. I don't know what to do in terms of what games to bring you because obviously we want to include the Champions League but it's right around Liverpool and United and I kind of want to bring you those games as well. Maybe we do, maybe we, I was only going to do 10 episodes, maybe we extend it out. Maybe we do PSG Liverpool next episode, PSG United the next episode after that. 
we might have won the league by then as well because we'd only be have one game left. So I think that's what we're going to do because they're all really mouth like mouth watering games that you want to want to see. So yeah, that will be the next episode then. PSG and Liverpool. Because Liverpool are, are the team that are hunting us down for this title as well. So that's what we will do. If we win that game, we should, th- in theory, go on to win the league. But guys, I hope you have enjoyed this one. Pop a like on there for me if you have. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>